Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Kendall Live. As always, we're gonna talk about what's happening in music. This week we're talking about the Grammys. I'm today's host, EJ Paras. I'm Laura Muselli. And I'm Mikey Martin. Let's get started with some music news. On Saturday, February 13th, the up-and-coming English indie band Viola Beach and their manager were involved in a fatal car accident in Stockholm. Being formed last May, the band had not gained a huge following, but BBC Radio 1 DJ Hugh Stevens had said that the band was, quote, incredibly promising. Fans have started a campaign to get the band's single, Swings and Water Slides, to number one in the UK singles chart, with all benefits going to the family members of the band. From working titles, So Help Me God, to Swish, to Waves, Kanye West released his highly anticipated album, officially entitled The Life of Pablo, an LP that can best be described as his most Kanye album to date. After his mesmerizing performance on Saturday Night Live, Kanye announced the release of his album on Tidal and KanyeWest.com. The album has the grandiosity and huge beats you'd expect from Kanye, and it even has the Taylor Swift lyric that caused a lot of controversy. But it also has its poignant moments in songs like Real Friends, where he acknowledges his flaws and anxieties. My standout tracks are No More Parties in LA featuring Kendrick Lamar and Ultra Light Beam, where Chance the Rapper seizes the moment and delivers one of the best verses in recent rap memory. If you can look past Kanye's antics, The Life of Pablo deserves a listen from beginning to end, which is currently only exclusive to Tidal. Cubalt's spring semester lineup was recently released, and it doesn't disappoint. In addition to the student soloist and student band nights, Cub is bringing artists William Beckett, Vinyl Theater, and Beth Stelling to campus. Brian Sella, the front man for TC and TCNJ favorite The Front Bottoms, is also scheduled for a, an acoustic performance. This will mark Sella's first return to the college after the wild fall concert of 2014 in which students storm Kendall Hall stage at the end of his band set. All performances will take place in either the Decker Social Space or the Stud. Check out Cub's Facebook page for more information. All right, great stories, guys. Great stories. Before we go into the Grammys, let's talk about our news stories that we had. Mikey, Viola Beach, that is crazy stuff that happened. Kind of eerie. Tell us how you yeah. got into the band. So I was just on Spotify, like on the Discover tab, and I, there was like new bands, those new. So Viola Beach, I listened to them. I liked it a lot. And then it was like Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I like, I'm just sitting in bed on Saturday, and then I just see a uh, tweet, and it's like, Rip Viola Beach, a uh, band involved in Fatal Cars. And I was like, what? Like, how does that happen? That is really tragic. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I, I ended up listening to them after the story, and it's kind of like terrible that, that this is what it comes down to. Like, this is like the yeah. weirdest marketing scheme that, no, this is obviously not a marketing no, scheme, marketing but I mean, scheme, like, but it's just really <clears throat> tragic, everything that happened. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's life, it's fragile. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Leonard Skinner thing, you know? Just it's terrible. Mm -hmm. it is. Uh, Cub Alts. Yeah, they're having some good performances coming this semester. Absolutely. Anything you're looking forward to I mean, the most? I'm looking forward to Brian Sella. Yeah, I'm looking forward good. to seeing him and not, not the whole band from Bottoms, just him, mm -hmm. an acoustic thing. It should and be good. Vinyl Theater, they opened for 21 Pilots before. I never saw them live, but I mean, everyone says that they put on really good performances. I know a few songs by them, so that should be cool. Yeah, good can, stuff, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Life of Pablo. Oh man, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That'll be that's that's for another day. I I can't. Just, I love it. That's it. Well, let's <laughs> go to this week's discussion. The biggest night in popular music, the Grammys. I'm sure we've all watched the awards show. Let's start with the performances. So it's performances and awards. Let's start with the performances. And Grammys are known for having these awesome moments. Eminem uh, meets Elton John. Whitney Houston, I will always love you. Great moments. This year's Grammys. Were there any performances that really like? you locked on to you think it will be in like the grammy hall of fame little, little vault pitbull Pit no, no I'm, I'm completely like no i really like the dells <laughs> yeah yeah i like good. adele live she's phenomenal even with the the little incident that happened that uh apparently there was like some the piano strings were being altered that's why it sounded like there was an out-of-tune guitar playing that's kind of what led to her mishap she I treated see, herself yeah. to in and out after so it was all worth I, it I guess, bottom line it was great. not adele's fault no never no. adele's fault mm -hmm. <laughs> so adele's moment for you yeah I liked it. Lauren? I liked Al Alabama Shakes. I yeah. thought they were really good. I mean, I love her and I love them, so that was a treat for me. Also, Pitbull and Robin Thicke's performance was terrible. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know why they decided it to put those two existed. people together. And they closed the show awful. as the credits were coming <laughs> up as they were there. Like, this is what we leave you with, America. This is uh, how we Pitbull want you to remember. Pitbull and Robin Thicke. <laughs> Uh, I mean, my Grammy moment was definitely Kendrick Lamar's performance. Uh, Black of the Berry and uh, All Right. Like, it's really... And in my opinion, what should have been album of the year, it's a pimple butterfly. It was just really appropriate for the time that we are in right now, the kind of unrest that's happening. And I think it really, all the eyes were on Kendrick. Like everyone in the audience was kind of just like really like awestruck. At, like, like they were witnessing intense. something exactly. 
Uh, great stuff, guys. Well, the point of the Grammys is not about the awards. Let's not forget. So <laughs> album of the year went to Taylor Swift, best new artist, Megan Trainer. Record of the year went to Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars for Uptown Funk. And Song of the Year went to Ed Sheeran for Thinking Out Loud. Uh, so what do you guys think of those awards? Any other awards I didn't point out that, yeah, let's start with that. I think we all feel the same way about <laughs> Megan Trainer. Oh my god, and no. Courtney Barnett absolutely should have won. Courtney tell Barnett? me why, tell me why. Okay, because, because oh, you, go first. You, you go first, okay. you go first. So like, Courtney Barnett, talent-wise, and like it's just infinitely better. Okay. Lyrically, she's phenomenal. Many, many people don't know who Courtney Barnett is. Yes. So if she's you could describe Courtney Barnett to somebody. From Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. I love Australian music, obviously, <laughs> again. Um, she just like, lyrically, it's just so, it's, she has like a, almost like a talking, just mm -hmm. crazy lyrics that don't even make sense, but it's phenomenal. Like a modern uh, Bob Dylan meets uh, Kurt Cobain. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she herself is her own thing. And mm -hmm. that's like something that I think, don't think happens very often in mm -hmm. music. Like she is literally the first, I'm per, at least I'm pretty biased, I love her, but I think she's just like the most unique thing in a very long time. Very true. And I think, um, Critically, we were talking about all the publications that said she should have won Best Artist, and still Megan Trainor wins. Well, I mean, she has like a lot of hits. <laughs> That's the thing, and but what's really more important? Really recognizable hits. You know, like popularity or like. Clubsters. And I'm gonna love you, <laughs> like I'm gonna do. What? What even is? With John Legend. Oh. And no, she was like really emotive, like during her speech. Oh, I feel like okay. She really, she really wanted it. Well, we gotta be happy for the people, you know. Sometimes. But well, me you know. personally, yeah, Courtney Barnett should have won yeah. Best New Artist. But I mean, I can see why they would go with Megan Trainor, and then you do need someone like recognizable winning these awards. Yeah, and a lot of people are voting. I think I believe uh, all previous Grammy winners are allowed to vote, and, uh, and then all different producers and managers, like so, thousands of people are voting. So if they would choose a, an artist that they've heard of before, maybe they haven't heard of any of the nominees except for Megan Trainor. That's why they checked her box. If they're voting for the Grammys and they haven't heard any of those artists besides Megan yeah, Trainor, they should, they should be not voting be voting for the, for the Grammys. So maybe they, they have to fix something about that. I mean, yeah. it wasn't only Courtney Barnett. There was James Bay, Tori Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who was the uh, some country guy? I don't know, but Sam Hunt. Sam Hunt. So. All right. So that's best noise. Any other awards? Let's tackle one or two more. Um, so like I'm personally very happy that Album Shakes won Best Alternative Album. Okay. But I feel like at this point, like they don't need to be in alternative. Like they could have been in rock album and still have won. Mm -hmm. Cause like I feel like Currents, I personally I think that Tim was a better album by Tim mm. and Paul. Yeah, that album's Fair phenomenal. Enough. But how about I'm still very happy. How about album of the year? Taylor Swift, 1989. Not, not I happy mean, at I, all. I'm not really a Taylor Swift fan, so I can't necessarily defend her. I mean, I guess it's well, the same thing: it popularity versus whatever else. Who should it have been? I would have been fine with anybody but Taylor yeah. Swift, wow, honestly. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just like, well, it, we were talking about uh, Kendrick Lamar. Like, I have only listened to like three or four songs off the album. Mm -hmm. But like, you can it's tell. It's a great album. That, great yeah, album. yeah. You can tell that it's just like so much emotion, like so much passion just going into all the songs. Mm -hmm. And just. Your pick? I agree with that. I mean, Not I, I also would have been. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like they didn't stand a chance. I mean, if yeah. I personally got to pick, mm -hmm. then yeah, it would be Alabama Shake. Sounding Color, I think, is amazing. But I mean. Well, Taylor Swift's 1989 transcended pop music. Kind of took it to a new height. It's like it's like the only album that, besides I guess Adele's Twenty Five, that could really sell. And uh, but um, I mean personally, I would have chosen to Pimp a Butterfly. Kendrick Lamar is like that is like a like a novel almost. Like it's like it's an experience in itself. Um, it's it's a really good album. It should be listened to beginning to end, like in one shot. And uh, it's it's not like a an album you jam to. It's not like J Cole. It's not like Kanye. It's not Drake. This is more of a story. It's very uh, literary influenced. Um, I feel like it's going to be studied. He wants it to be studied in college courses and even high school courses later in about injustice among uh, blacks and I guess minorities in general. So I think that for, the, for 2016, 2015, it's very important for the time. I feel like it yeah. should have won. Maybe an opportunity wasted to kind of get like uh, representation, especially with the Oscars being yeah. all Oscars yeah. so yeah, white. They, they but I mean, it's fine. Taylor Swift's album was good. It had a lot of collaborators on it. It's not just Taylor Swift. Yeah. So, I mean, props to everybody, you know. It, it is awards, after all, it's just hardware. You can, you can have an opinion about it, but really in the end, it's what you like to listen to is what you listen to. So, great talk, guys. And now we've got an exclusive Kendall Live scenic session featuring Kelsey Fama. Check it out. Hi, I'm Kelsey Fama, and this is Prettiest Friend by Jason Mraz.
<laughs> this is Can You Feel the Love Tonight by Elton John from The Lion King. That's all the time we have for this week. Once again, I'm EJ Paras. I'm Laura Masilli. And I'm Mikey Martin. Thanks for watching.